So Jesus is telling this parable, and there are so many different levels of this parable that we can look at today. We see, first he says, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gives a wedding feast for his son. And the first question we ask is, who's the bride? If the, if the son is getting married, who's the bride? If we take some time to really ponder over this and pray over this, we realize, of course, the bride of the Son is the church. We hear this in the book of Revelation. We hear this in the scriptures that uh, the church is the bride of Christ. That means that we are called to be the bride of Christ. This incredible gift that this is what it's all about. I've said this before and I'll say it again. The summary of the Bible is God wants to marry us. God wants to marry us. That intimate union that he wants with us. And that's why he gives himself to us in Holy Communion. So that we can become one flesh. His body united to our bodies. So he says, you know, he dispatches the servants to come to this wedding feast. The feast of his son. And some refuse. And we look, and obviously, you're all here. So preach into the choir, uh, quite literally and, and figuratively as well, <laughs> that, um, that he's, he's giving us his very self in this feast. That the Eucharist, his very body and blood, soul and divinity, he's created this feast, which is the marriage feast of the Lamb. Our union with Almighty God. Our marriage with God. He gives this to us and he says, I am giving you my whole self, everything I am. Will you not come to me? Will you not come into my arms? Will you not come and receive my love? And what is this, you know? So some refuse to come, you know. Uh, well, tell those invited, be it's, it's ready. And some ignored the invitation and went away. One to his farm, another to his business. Well, you know, I can't go to Mass right now. I've got too much work. Uh, there's a, a pseudo song that was um, uh, written about uh, 15 years ago by Bob Rice. And he talked about how, uh, he was talking about how he was going through this drive through looking for Jesus-ish, you know, he was looking for Jesus, and they, they, but it wasn't Jesus, it was Jesus light type of thing. And so they're saying, well, okay, well, I don't want Jesus-ish, I want Jesus. He says, well, you know, Jesus requires all that you have. Jesus-ish Jesus is only what you can spare. That way you have more time for family, friends, and work. And the guy says, you know, I don't think I have enough time for work. <laughs> that sounds great. Do we spend the time with Jesus? What do we put as a priority over him? Of course, you're all here, thanks be to God. But so many, and so many times, we find excuses for not coming to receive at this banquet. Coming to receive the wedding feast of the Son. Of course, worse is some even kill the messengers and um, the king is sent to destroy those murderers and burn their city. Now, we look at this and we can see he's talking to the chief priests and elders and in a very real historical context, he's warning them. Receive the message that I'm giving you. Receive the kingdom of God because if not, you're going to be destroyed. And it was. Jerusalem was destroyed in AD 70. It's not that, you know, the... Uh, the wrath of God came out and said, Okay, you refused my, my, my invitation. I'm going to smite you. But rather, it's spiritual physics. When we reject God, this happens to our souls. When we reject God, this evil then comes about. Not that God is saying, I'll smite you, but just He's saying, I want you to be protected. I want you to come to me, and if you don't, this is what's going to happen. And it's not that we we got to remember, of course, we're not looking at this and saying, all those Jewish people, they're bad. No, of course not. We're talking about the Jewish leaders that he was talking to, the chief priests and the elders. These who rejected the, the 
the teaching of Jesus and we're drawing other people away from him. So it's not like we can say, well, the Jewish people bad and Christians good. No, I'm not saying that at all. And that's not what Jesus was saying. Jesus was Jewish, right? His disciples, his mother, they were all Jewish. But we look and we say, when we, no matter where we are, when we reject the call of Jesus, there's a spiritual physics that happens that allows evil to enter in a way that couldn't enter before. Not because God is uh, spiteful, but because He loves us so much He says, come to me. Now with all this, of course, we recognize God will never step on our free will. He tries to tell us, don't go against my will because it's going to bring you harm. But He never, ever steps on our free will. He doesn't force those people to come into His banquet. They come or they don't. And then even, this is the great mercy of God, then He calls out and they go out and find anyone that will be there, the good and the bad, it says, the bad even are invited into the banquet. So none of us can say, well, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. We're all called to come into the presence of Almighty God. But, as the end of the parable shows, we have to ask ourselves, have we put on the wedding banquet? There's something required of us. God invites us all in. He is merciful. He wants everyone here. But there is something required of us as well. We have to put on the wedding banquet. Now, we, a lot of times when I was reading this uh, growing up, I'd say, well, how come he just kicked this guy out? He just got pulled out off the street saying, come to the wedding banquet. He didn't have time to go home and change. How come he came in and he didn't have the right clothes on and he gets kicked out? I mean, that's a, that's a good question. But then we look at the question from the other side. Everybody else had a wedding banquet. I'm sorry, everybody else had a wedding garment. How come he didn't? Because there are some scripture scholars that say that it was the king himself who was supposed to provide the wedding garment for the wedding. He gave the wedding garment out to everyone. And this man refused. And then when the king comes to him and said, how come you're not wearing a wedding garment? He's left in silence. What should he have done? He should have said, I'm sorry, would you give me a wedding garment? There's a, a, a story about a man who, who died and went before the pearly gates, and you know, they really are pearly. And see, St. Peter comes out and says to him, Okay, why should I let you into heaven? And here's the thing, we're on this point system now. You need a hundred points to get into heaven. He says, okay, well, uh, so why should I let you into heaven? He says, well, um, I tried to live my life in a good way. I, I tried to raise my, my kids to, to follow Christ. And, you know, I tried to be a loving husband to my wife and all these things. And St. Peter says, oh, that's great. That's a point and a half. What? Okay, um... Well, you know, I, I helped out at the, the food pantry once a week for years. And, you know, I would go on mission trips and help those who are poor. And, you know, I made sure to give my money to those who were in need. And, you know, I would occasionally go to the nursing homes and visit the elderly. And says, oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's two points. Man's now really getting worried. He's saying, I now have three and a half points and I, there's no way I can get to heaven. So, oh, I'm only going to get in by the grace of God. And he says, that's it. There's a hundred points right there. It's by God's grace. It's by God's grace that we get to heaven. We can't earn it, but we do have to participate. We do have to allow him to put the wedding garment on, on us. St. Therese of Lisieux said, you know, she said, I don't have any merits of my own. You know, I, 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 I come to you, Almighty God, with empty hands. And I want you to fill my hands with your merits, with your deeds. I have nothing that I can give you but myself. 
that the Lord recognizes how little we are, but we have to be able to come to Him and say, here I am, I'm broken, I need your mercy, I need your love. Our wedding garment, of course, is re the reception of His mercy, the, the good deeds that we do, but even the good deeds that we do are His works in us. He, he requires our free will, but He also is the one that's doing everything in us. It's this spiritual uh, dichotomy that's going on. It's all Him, but we're required as well. And how does that work? I don't know. But it means that we can't just sit back, relax, and say, Okay, Father, preach it. I'm just going to listen and I'm going to watch you. We can't just sit back and say, okay, God is doing everything, so I don't have to do anything. On the other hand, we can't say, well, I'm going to earn heaven. Look at me. I'm so much better than the people around me. Look at all the things that I've done. I've done this and this and this and this and this. But rather, we have to come and say, God, I give you my yes. I need your mercy. Because I can't do this on my own. It's the both and. Completely my free will but all God's mercy in my life. We hear in the uh, letter to the Philippians today, I can do all things in Him who strengthens me. You know that word all. In the Greek, when you look and examine what that means in terms of I can do all things to Him who strengthens me, that word all, actually, uh, literally translated is all. We can do all things <laughs> through Him. Not just kind of some things. Not most things. Not occasionally things that are greater than I would expect. We can do all things through Him who strengthens me. So we turn to God and say, God, do the impossible in my life. Make me holy. Make me holy. Venerable Fulton Sheen said this, at the end of this life, when we get to heaven, there are going to be three surprises. Three surprises. The first is, there are going to be people there that we didn't expect to see there. Second thing in heaven that's going to surprise us is there are going to be some people there that we expected to see there that aren't there. He said the biggest surprise of all is that we're going to be there. And this is the grace of Almighty God. If we come and say, Lord, I need your help. Here's my yes. He will come and put the wedding banquet on us. But we have to come. We have to choose to come to the feast. This day, may we allow our lives to be transformed. May we come to God, the God of mercy, the God who recognizes our weakness, our brokenness, who comes to bring healing to our hearts, our souls, our whole beings. Let us come to Him and say, God, I need your help. Here is my little yes. I come before you. Do everything in me.